Hello, Jimmy from Erie Campers. Australia Day weekend. It's coming up, isn't it? Well, it won't be a weekend unless you're going to have a, a RDO or a couple of days leave, which most people will. So that'll make it into a bit of a holiday. Just remember, double demerit points. Lots and lots of police out there, or coppers, wallopers. I like to call them police. I think they deserve a title. They've got a bit of a prick of a job. Um, alcohol, speeding, fatigue. Just because you finished work last night, or this morning, you can't get in the car and drive straight to where you're going to go without being a danger to yourself, your family, and whoever else is on the road. So if you're tired, have a snooze. Uh, my day job is driving a semi-trailer down to Sydney and back every night. And by law, I can't drive while I'm tired. I have a logbook that I have to fill out. I have to go through all of that kind of stuff. But even if I'm within the hours and I'm tired, I will pull up and have a snooze. So you need to do the same. And don't put yourself in that position. 2007, our son was killed in a um, car accident on Australia Day, changing the tyre. Um, it was just one of the, all of those hazards pulled up on the side of the road, changing the tyre on the right hand side of the car, on a freeway, hit by a B double. Just all of those hazards all come together, and when they did, someone then lost their life. So. Just think about what you're doing this weekend. Think of James. That's all you've got to do there. Just think of him and that may just jog your memory. Um, alcohol on the water. Don't go swimming when you're drunk. Don't get in a motor, don't get in a, um, in a boat with a can of beer in your hand. You're not allowed to do it in a car and you're not allowed to do it in a boat either. Um, you know, it could wreck your it could wreck your um, your holiday as you're going to have it as such, so be careful of that. Uh, on the way home, leave yourself enough time to get home. Don't stay out the outback or out here in this beautiful orange area um, and decide that you're going to drive home tired. Don't do that either. Try and keep everybody and yourself safe. Don't drive any more than two hours and uh, pull up and have a walk around a drink. You know, a soft drink or something like that. Don't drink beer, of course. You're not allowed to do that. But anyhow, just be careful. Even some of you people that smoke, you've got rights just as many as, as much as people that don't smoke have got rights. But at the end of the day, if you want to have a fag, use that. You go two hours and say, well, I'm going to have a smoke here. You've got to pull up on the side of the road because you're not allowed to smoke in the car when you've got kids in there. So pull up and have a walk around, have your fag, get back in your car. Just, just remember those things. Two hours. Max, maximum that you can drive um, or whenever you feel tired within that two hours so just remember that all right containers for carrying fuel that is the best one that there we filled that up and we put it we put it in the back of the jeep we sealed that up no smell of fuel none at all piece of resistance whether it's diesel or petrol or whatever you want to carry is this one here a little bit of engineering made it so it's locked nobody can get that open until you take this lock out take the lock out do such the lid has another safety on it take that one out now that's a can lock 100% sealed do yourself a favour and go buy one of these. They're about 29 bucks. This thing is $100. You only need to buy one in your lifetime. Just look after it. Don't let the rust get on it. Don't let it rub holes in it. You know, be be careful of it and it'll last you for your life, lifetime. And when you put that on there, it won't leak fuel. That bends around pretty well. But look at this. So when you're fueling your car, you can hold that up there and you can tip the fuel in like such. You can rest on this, it won't break, it just won't come off there. It's a good bit of gear, absolutely worth the money, $29, $100.
So they're not quite, they're 98 dollars. BCF sell them and also super cheap. And you can get them on afterpay, so it's not hard. They're the ones to have. The steel ones are great. This one here, myself and Mr. Wilson went down to get lawnmower fuel. So we took this one. We put petrol in it. And on the way back, because it's completely sealed, we, I thought it'd be okay, so I put it in the back of the Jeep. And on the way back, we could smell fuel vapors. Mind you, it's a sealed unit. So this one here, no fuel. This one here I had in the back of the Jeep, no fuel. No fuel vapors, I should say. Now, this one here, you got a lid. You got this little thing that seals everything off. And you got this spout. So you lose this, throw the lot away. Go back 30 bucks. Oh, about $30, yeah. Because it is 20 litres, not 10. Right, so you lose that, throw the rest away because you can't buy that. Put this on here. Now this demonstration I'm going to show you here now isn't something that was showed to me. It's something I learnt. I was fueling up with this. It was all going well. And then I had two, two of these in my camper. So I had to get another one, which is this one here. We was at Barclay Station in the middle of nowhere. Their fuel out there is a dollar eighty a litre. So we fueled up at Mount Isa. We had enough fuel to fill the Jeep up again. But as I was fueling it up, that's what happened. And I lost fuel down the side of the car. Probably not a lot, but think of think of the fire danger. Think of the, the amount like losing fuel in places in remote you lost 10 litres 10 litres could be as much as 100 k's you've just lost 100 k's worth of fuel so is it this is why this is better you can do that you, know, you won't break this it won't tear out it has to have that cam lock come out i know it's dear a hundred dollars twenty nine dollars but that's all you have to pay for your life. That's yours. That one there fits this one. That there fits the red one. So if you lose that, throw it away. If you are involved in a fire of some kind, small fire, that there or that there is fairly safe. There's a thing called a blebby, but we won't go into that. This thing here, because it was in the back of the Jeep, and because I could smell fumes, that means that if there was a small fire around this thing, there's no reason why it couldn't catch on fire. And it's made out of burning material. These aren't. So, do yourself a favour. Go and buy one of these and one of these in your lifetime, if you're a serious camper. You know? It's most important that you think of the serious things on your car. Very serious is your steering, your brakes and also how you carry fuel. Just think about it. Um, this one here, if you take this, put it down at the bowser, screw the lid off it, grab the bowser, stick it in there, waiting for old mate, the Indian or the Paki, or even one of our Australian people to turn the bowser on, he ain't gonna do it. Because it's a wrong container. You can't fill that full of diesel, petrol or whatever. You can fill it with as much water as you want. That's why it's blue, because it takes water, and water only. So don't go there thinking that I'll just fill that up and that'll get me out of trouble. It won't. Plan all this before you go. That way there'll be no trouble. You won't have to worry about fuel. You'll carry enough fuel. We carry two of these and two of these. That's all we carry. 20, 40, 60, 80. Exactly what the um, Jeep carries. 80 litres of fuel in the diesel tank is all it carries. So, do yourself a favour, these are the ones to have. We have two diesel, one petrol for the generator. Um, when you're out the outback or out in the sunlight, it's a good idea to have the right gear on. Long longs protect you from the UV rays, protect you from um, skin cancer, scratches up the arms, the legs, decent pair of boots on, you won't get bitten with a snake, you won't get sun scraped, you won't get um, sun cancer, you won't get sunburnt. 
when you get to camp, take all this off, put your shorts on and put your singlet on and stay in the shade. This here, very, very important that you have a decent hat. Um, this hat here is uh, named after a very important person, Mal Leyland, because he wears nearly the same hat. So this is Mal. I take Mal wherever I go. Um, and it's a good hat. It's got a good, strong string on it, so, you know, it don't blow off your head. There's nothing worse than you put a hat on and you walk out in the wind and it blows off your head. Not good. So always take Mal wherever I go. F10. You can see I use this. This this is an additive that goes into diesel. Now I, and it can also go into petrol too at the same time. I don't say that you have to use it all the time, but when you go out west or you go out the outback or you go north, on here it'll give you a list of everything that it looks after. The most important one there is it kills um, algae that grows in diesel. Now, if, if you're not truck drivers, we had a serious, a serious problem 10 years ago with algae and diesel. It got into fuel and it just goes as far as the filter and that's as far as it goes. So, and it causes immense problems. You've got to change filters, you've got to, look, and the, the higher the temperature of the fuel, the more it grows. Put this stuff in it and it kills it. Goes as far as the filter, I know, but that's better than it, uh, it getting bigger and bigger and bigger, because as you add the fuel to it, the algae grows. It also participates water, and also wax, and a few other things. Now, it's F10, and it's as dear as poison. It's $65 for that bottle. But one mil does one litre. So you just measure up the side up there how much you've got. When you go into remote areas or you go out in the outback, you'd probably use this. When you're around town, like when you go to the local 7-Eleven or BP, don't worry about it. You know, like at the end of the day, you don't need to worry about fuel additives so much there. So now this one here is <coughs> fuel stabiliser. And what happens with it, you put it in your petrol and that stops your petrol from going off. Instead of getting a month out of it, you might get two or three months out of it, maybe four months. Because if you don't put this in it and you've got fuel sitting in this one for up to a month or even two months, you put it in the lawnmower and you pull, 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 pull and you can't get the lawnmower going because the fuel is actually separated and not real good. Okay, don't get mixed up with this one. This one here is injector cleaner and injector cleaner only. It just cleans all the crud and shit out of your injectors and that's all it'll do. Don't put that in your fuel thinking that it'll do the same as this, because it won't. All right? So if you've got a generator like we've got in our camper, you're gonna put fuel in it, you wanna store it for a little while, this one here. If you've got a generator in your um, camper that's not running all that well, and you wanna clean the carby out, you use this one. Really, I'd use that one to clean it out too. But anyhow, um, you take, you, you take your phone with you wherever you go because it's a good GPS, it's got a good direction on where to go to get fuel, what to do, where you can go camping, where you can get accommodation, where you can buy food, where you can do whatever. You can do all that. It's not a problem. But when you go into remote areas or into the outback, you'll lose phone service. Now, you should have, I'll walk a bit closer, you should have these maps that gives you an idea of where you are. This is Casino here, and out to Tenerfield. So it shows you where you've got to go and what you've got to do. That, that's fairly straightforward. You can do that, just, just say you come from Sydney. Never been up there before, phone dies, you lose your lead, phone's flat, you can't do a thing with it. You need to know where you are. You're at least more now, so which direction do I take? So you can follow the map until you can get another phone, or you can get another lead, or you can get another battery. But the most important thing of some of these maps, some of these places is just here is Cairns. Up through here and around there is Cooktown. That's where we're going in June, in Cooktown. But we're going to go up through this area. It's, a, it's not remote, but it's fairly tight. We're going to go through that area. Now, once you go up the Peninsula Road up here, up to Cape York, which is next year, uh, hopefully the COVID stuff will be out of the road. 
your phone won't work up there. So that means you have no GPS, no direction, you don't know where you're going, you can't make a call, you can't do anything. You are by yourself. You leave this at home, you're flying blind. Now, as for if you was a pilot, flying blind means you have around about 2.8 seconds to live. Because that's how long the average pilot will live if they have no idea where they're going. I don't get paid, I don't get any freebies, I don't do anything, I've got to buy this, this is called HEMA. HEMA Maps is about the best you can buy. About $50 for this book, but I'll show you the difference. Um, that there is good to have, it's something. I won't disagree with you with that. If that's what you've got, that's what you've got. Alright, but HEMA make the best. How do I know that? Because, as soon as I find an area that's got the maps, which is, uh, I should have marked these, but I didn't. Um, righto. Here we are. Your phone definitely will not work in this area. Guaranteed to not work. Here's all your GPS coordinates across here. Your latitude, your longitude. You work out where you are and what you are. Right, you don't have to worry about that at this stage. What you do need to worry about is, there's accommodation there. There's water there. There's accommodation there. There's also accommodation here. There's accommodation there. Over here, you've got police stations. You've got fuel. That's marked on HEMA maps. With the other map, it's not marked on there. Plus, you've got a better direction of what everything is there. So you can get things repaired in these little towns. In Hopevale, you can get things repaired. You can get a feed, you can get a fire, you can get a phone, you can get fuel, you can get, and also medical. In that area there. Doesn't show you on that other map. That's why I'm saying to you, HEMA maps. HEMA maps are the better ones to buy buy this one in a lifetime admittedly there's going to be changes in the roads as as uh, prog um, progression goes on but in saying that buy the best buy the best you can buy look at the end of the day it's about camping it's about having a good time and it's about getting home safe and it's about being safe on the road if we can remember all those things and half of what I've showed you today, that's better than having nothing at all. But just remember, we've got a series of videos you can watch on some of the areas we've been to, some of the documentaries we've done, some of the cooking things we've done. Just always revert back to one of them when, you, when you've when you got service. Just go to Harry Campers on Mr. Google and it'll take you to wherever you want to go or go to Harry Campers on YouTube um, and type in Harry Campers and it'll bring up all the, all the videos. Or go to Facebook. When, when we put a video on, when we put a new video on, we always put it on Facebook. Go to Facebook, send us a notification on, on um, YouTube, ask me a question, and I will gladly get to you. Not straight away, because I've got other things on at the same time, or you can send me an email, which I read every day, which is harrycampers at gmail.com and ask me any questions and I can help you where I can help you or push you in the right direction or put you in contact with the right people so you can do that. But anyhow, this is Jimmy from Harry Campers. Just remember, get out there and enjoy yourself, be safe and have a great Australia Day. Thanks for watching.